Ladies and gentlemen, today is October 10th, 2013, and this is the Kane Kale Show, episode 104. I'm your host, Ken Lafferty, and this is the show where you learn to be better artists, and I really hope I don't have spaghetti sauce on my face. I just finished eating a giant plate of spaghetti made by myself, and ragu, courtesy of ragu for importing the sauce from wherever the heck they make it. But today, we are going to be jumping into some freelance work. Freelance work? What? How the heck did I get permission to show this? Well, first off, I decided that I was going to work with this amazing man named Luke, and he hails from Pauldron Games, and he is working on a mobile app, and I am going to be designing characters for the video game. And while I can't go into too much detail as to exactly what the story is and all that stuff, basically, I mean, you get the, you get the, the meat and potatoes right here. You get to see the actual character, and I'm going to be walking you through my process with creating this character and hopefully shed some light on the experience for those of you who are looking to do some freelance work for yourselves. All right, Ethan. So first, to start things off, let's go ahead and pull up a good old-fashioned time lapse. Or before we do that, <laughs> before we do that, I should probably show you something else. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and close that down because uh, that, that picks up from where I started today. Let me show you some of the beginning things that we were doing with this character. And if I still have them, I might actually have to pull them up. Gosh dang it. Gosh dang it. Of course. Of course. <laughs> okay. So basically, um, the first thing I can show you guys is right here. So the first thing that I was in charge of was, hey, we got to figure out what this character is even going to look like. we got to figure out what the face of this character is going to look like. All right, so we started off with these ones over here. Um, in fact, uh, this one here, right, and they're marked A, B, C. This is something that is very nice to do when you're working freelance because you can easily just kind of jump between different uh, options, you know, and your client can easily say, oh, I like the nose of D and the eyes of K, you know. And you can just do stuff like that. And it makes it really, really handy to just kind of um, just reference those things as opposed to uh, the, the fourth one from the left and the second one from the right. You know, just, just label your things with letters and numbers. I'm sure you guys have seen stuff like that before. And all these faces are very, very similar. In fact, this was a process that I was going through. And I was just kind of moving things around very, very subtly. Like this one has a slightly longer nose right here. F right there. Slightly longer nose. And then as we went down here, you know, I was just messing around with the eyes. I brought the eyes down a little bit, so his forehead was a little bit bigger. And then uh, we ended up going with the last one, which was K, which uh, basically has a slightly higher nose, slightly lower eyes. And uh, I agree with that one, too. I agree that that was my favorite one. I got to that one, and I was like, you know what? Something about that one. It just looks good. Let's roll with it. Roll with it. All right, so the next thing I want to show you guys is... Uh, I'm also in charge of creating the armor for this character, okay? And I want to show you guys basically how I go about doing that. Let's move on to the armor, okay? Because this is what we got here right now, but it's like, well, how the heck did you get to that, right? And then just slap that down and be like, okay, that looks good. No, no. No, no. There's a process for everything. There's a process for everything. And I'm going to show you, and I'm going to also exit Skype. All right. Okay, so as I was saying before, before we were so rudely interrupted, I was talking about how I come up with these ideas for armor. Now, uh, the first thing I want to call your attention to is these little shapes over here. And these might look like nothing, really, but they are shape languages from the armor and things that were basically done. Like some of the characters already, there were concepts of them that, that hail from this certain kingdom that this character is also going to be from. So I wanted to make sure that there's like some similar uh, shape languages happening in there. So I just pulled out a couple that I really liked and see what I could do with them. So the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is when you're designing armor. I've done a tutorial on this before, but um, a lot of people ask, it's like, well, how the heck do you come up with, you know, this this plate design, and how do you know, how do you know you're supposed to like lay this on top of that, and then create this belt that goes over in front of that, and then these little things that stick down? It's like, it's actually not that hard. All that you require is a basic understanding of how 
the armor works, right? And you can look up all kinds of tutorials, and I think even in my old tutorial I talk a little bit about the basics of how armor works. And for those of you who are curious, I actually did do um, some studies on this, and that's what this is right here. This is me taking notes and just paying attention to how this medieval armor actually worked. And just like, you know, how, how do they bend their knee and how do they make it so that, you know, they can actually move their arms and not like jab themselves in the wrist, you know, with the, the crazy, you know, elbow decoration that they have on there. And some of the fantasy games, you know, some of that stuff is not realistic, but it's good to learn the basics. And there's tons of places you can learn about that and check out uh, pictures online. But after you have a basic understanding, after you have a basic understanding, all that you require is, like I said, I usually start with like silhouettes. And it's like, oh, that would be cool if these shoulders kind of stuck up like this. And, you know, uh, how's, what's the best way to describe this? It's almost like thinking in values, right? Like this, this chess piece had a little arrow on it, right? Like that. And that's literally me just going in and almost erasing out the designs, right? And then I come through here and it's like, okay, wouldn't it be cool if it did something like that? You know, just like drawing these designs. And be like, ooh, okay, that's cool. And then another thing that's important to understand is when you create a like a shape that you really enjoy, that you like, such as this can opener looking thing. I don't know if I'd use this in real life, but say you did like it. You want to make sure that there's other parts of the armor that kind of reflect that. So maybe you put one in here too. You know, and here one like there too. You know, and what this does is it creates a cohesive, like cool looking piece of armor because it's like oh okay yeah these these two pieces go together or these shapes go together as opposed to like having you know just going in here and doing zigzags you know everywhere and something like that like lightning man how about that but that might actually get you somewhere that might actually give you an idea just like messing around messing around within the silhouette is what I'm trying to get out here that's a really cool way to create armor. Oh, and the other really cool thing is, is that it doesn't have to be either black or white. You can also just press a little bit lighter with your eraser, and then you have a mid-tone. So you can do something like this. You can start creating mid-tones, black, whites, and grays. How about that? And those can represent, you know, like little, you know, little strappy things, little uh, pieces of leather that kind of come through here. And you can begin to build your suit of armor in that way. And that's basically what I'm doing here. I start with something like that, and then I move on, you know, I just try something different. It's like, okay, how about rounder shoulders? And then it has like this weird little point thing there, you know? It's just messing around with stuff and seeing what pops out at you. And again, kind of relying, starting with shape languages really helps me out a lot. These shapes, like you'll notice, this shape I actually took and just stuck it right on the shoulder. Like that that type of shape, shape language, shape language, shake your booty language is happening right here and similarly uh, that can also be seen happening here and here you know so there's there's reoccurring designs uh, throughout the armor and I think that's a really really important thing to put into it because it just looks like it's all just like slapped together like none of the designs match it's gonna look kind of corny so anyway okay so what we ended up going with was this one right here the third one that I came up with uh, Luke said that he really enjoyed this one and he wanted me to go forward with it. And because Luke is an amazing man and an amazing client, he's also an artist, and he sent me back this, right? Which is a quick little sketch or a quick little drawing of where he wanted to take the armor. Because in his game, it's supposed to be a little bit more realistic. I, I drew the other one sort of like a World of Warcraft armor type thing. It looked like a World of Warcraft armor, like a paladin set or something like that. And he's like, we kind of want to tone it down, make it look a little bit more realistic. So he drew this, and I was like, whoa, that's really cool. Oh, and he has a cape? All right, let's do this. So I really like that. And again, like the shape languages and everything that he's got going on in here uh, was really, really helpful. And uh, just the introduction of like the leather straps and all that stuff. It's really good uh, for me, just trying to figure this stuff out as I go. And it was really helpful with getting to this point right here. All right, so now we can move into the time lapse. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so there's our armor that we started with, and now I'm gonna show you guys my process with creating the human body and then building armor on top of it. So, yeah, and usually I, I don't draw like a lot of dudes with armor on. So uh, it's really, but one of the important things for me to do is, is that actually make it look like this armor 
fits over top of the body and not like it's constricting it or like it's like cutting into pieces of the body like it's not physically possible to wear it so for that reason that's why I drew this entire body first I drew this body first and then I'm going to begin laying armor on top of it and uh, it might not be super important that you do it every time I don't know maybe it just depends on your thing I probably I do it because I like how it just it feels more authentic like laying armor on top of the body as opposed to just like building the armor and then hoping that the body would fit inside of it and just like making sure my proportions are right I just grabbed that head and duplicated it eight times I was like yes this is a proportional man this is a proportional naked muscular man okay and then you can start to see me laying the armor on top based upon my general understanding of armor right because of my because of my studies right my studies tell me how the basic idea of armor works and so I'm constantly just like referencing this one on the left over there and just making sure that I'm I'm basically taking the best of this and this and trying to combine them into one thing and hoping that that works out. So uh, one thing that I was trying to get right was um, like the, the hip guard or whatever you want to call it. Just trying to make that look right. I always have trouble with that. Just trying to figure out how it sits over and kind of protects the crotchal region and the hips, but then also allows your legs to move underneath it, like say you're running or something. And uh, yeah, this is basically what I'm talking about. Um, how I design, like notice how it starts off with just a shape, but then watch how I decide how to put the designs in there. I'll literally just color it all in black like that, and then I will erase out some designs, right? I think I erased out similar designs to what was there. I was like, ooh, I like those. I'm just going to redraw those in. And it ended up working out really well. I was like, okay, that's a good start. It's a good start. So I'm trying to get everything to just the general same amount of detail as to what it was at. And, uh, oh, you saw me right there. I actually warped. I grabbed the chest because it looked like it was really sunken in. Yeah, I did it again. It looked like it was really just like sunken in, and it, it, again, it doesn't look like it would fit over top of a body. And for a lot of a lot of chest plates and stuff, they, they come really far off of the chest, and they're really rounded and cool looking. So, <laughs> people are asking, is crotchful a real word? Look it up on Urban Dictionary. That's what somebody else said. Good question. Good question. Or, uh, yeah, good suggestion. So yeah, I just kicked that thing out and it looked a lot better. I liked it. I also did that in this one. That's why I liked this uh, concept a lot more. The chest was just way more out. It looked way more heroic and awesome. And I'm just trying to kind of play around with different um, different designs. You see, even right there, I, I decided to split the pauldron from one piece into two pieces because I liked how this like cascading layering effect was happening on the hip guard. And I wanted to bring that in again. Remember, consistency in your designs. I wanted to bring that into the shoulder, so you see me just very quickly uh, throw that in there, do a little bit of a layering effect there. So it feels good to look at this and that, and then all of these three things. Again, looks cohesive. We'll see if Luke feels the same about it. So, um, yeah. And then I also decided, I was like, oh yeah, he also needs a helmet, so we need to figure that out. And again, look at this. See that that piece right there? This is basically what I designed almost the entire um, uh, friggin' armor set around, right? <laughs> it, was, it was this knee pad. I was like, I like how this piece of metal just like comes off of it and then kind of shoots down into a point. And uh, I kind of did the same thing here, right? Kind of has that same thing where it comes down and then shoots off into a point. Same thing happening here in the helmet. So, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I don't have time to read your names. Yes, you are just someone in the chat. Sorry. <laughs> Pickled child. I'll do my best to say your names now. I will say your names now. I'll take the extra time. <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys, you guys are freaking funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I also thought, I was like, well, what's his weapon? I, I guess I'll just give him a sword or something, you know, just something to get started on. And then, um, you know, Luke and I can figure out what exactly uh, he's supposed to have as we go forward with that. So I'm just laying in the basic, just quick, quick, uh, quick sketch of what his face would be. And something that I find is really good to do when you're drawing realistic people, rather than try to figure out all the detail like within the eye region, think about it almost like the the shapes that the shadows make on a face when you're drawing it small. 
And what's really cool is that you can get away with drawing the eyes just as like a big shadow shape. And it makes your characters look badass, so you should definitely do that. So yeah, again, it's just like laying stuff in, kind of sculpting out the values that I want. And then what I'm going to be doing here in just a second is I'm going to be employing the technique of erasing everything around the edges of the character so we can prepare for masking. And for those of you who have watched the show before, you know this is basically my process. I draw everything out in kind of a sketchy sort of uh, uh, technique. And then I go through and take these edges and then I just sharpen them. Because eventually what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to begin masking. I'm going to, I'm going to lay down the mask and I'm going to magic wand everything around it. And I'm going to implode it, right? Invert it, which is shift control I. And then just go ahead and fill it. And what's really cool is that's a really easy way to just set up a character mask or a character silhouette mask. And then you can just drop all the colors in on top of it. And never have to worry about going outside of the lines ever again. <laughs> ever again. <laughs> you guys are like, is that Tank's ancient an ancestor? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Captain Big Butt is asking. Uh, or that's... Wait, no, somebody else said that. Ah, dang it, missed it. Mm, Dordua says Tank's ancestor. Captain Big Butt says Emma's ancestor. All right, so anyway, um, yeah, just laying in masks one by one, the, the cape. I like to keep all of these things on separate masks, and then I'll just go through, and then I'll lock whatever, uh, whatever layer I'm working with, and then I'll just start to fill it in. I'll start to fill it in, and it works very well, very well. Mm. So, um, yeah, and another thing that I really like about doing it this way is that the lines, like I, I, I have a lot of the values already kind of done in the lines. So basically what I'm doing is almost just like dropping in color. I'm just kind of messing around with it, see, seeing what looks good. And then what we're going to be moving into, which I'm going to be doing live for you today, is overpainting. Overpainting and line coloring because this is a, a very crucial part in terms of what I do with my work. Uh, it's just part of the process. It's almost like I set the lines down, put the colors behind it, and then I go back in front of it. Like creating a sandwich. The line art is the center. Line art is the meat and the potatoes. Potatoes! Alrighty, guys. So minus the uh, technical difficulties, we've been going for about 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and jump into this, and let's paint. Let's paint. Let's paint the lines, and let's uh, overpaint. Okay then. So you can see here, basically this is what our art looks like without the lines on it. See how much the art actually lends to it in terms of detail? There's still a lot of cool, you know, values and stuff happening here. But once you put the lines on, it really just kind of like brings it all together and it makes it look proper. So, um, but again, the only thing that I don't like about lines so much is that they kind of inhibit they inhibit like the value of things. Like, see how much more bright and luscious that cape looks, and then when you drop the lines on top of it, it kind of makes it muddy. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing those natural colors back out of it via overpainting. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to color the lines. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit this little button right here, which is the Lock Transparent Pixels button. That is your best friend on your line layer. And then what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to select whatever color you want your lines to be. Like for instance, I'm going to paint uh, red lines on the cape. And then that's going to bring out a little bit more of its lustrous qualities, as you can see right here. See? So what happens now is you're just painting your lines. You're just painting the lines and you're not painting anything else. And it's really, really handy. I like, I like this a lot. It's one of my favorite things to do because it preps you for overpainting and it's just overall a, a good time. It's just, just an overall good good old-fashioned gay time. So um, <laughs> let's, let's uh, just go ahead and fix this up as well. Let's go ahead and fix this up as well. And yeah, it's looking good. I'm also going to color the lines a little bit lighter on the Silba. Silba, and again, just the might, the, the very, like the smallest changes, the, the most minor of changes. I don't even know what I was trying to say there. The most minor of changes will affect your artwork in incredible ways. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this so you can actually see what I'm doing. 
Okay, so see what I'm doing? Especially where it gets bright, like right here. Those are good places to lighten the lines. Really good places to lighten the lines. You can also kind of clean up edges too with it. I just realized that. Looks cool. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. No, not Simba. Silva. All right. So yeah, I just like the way that this makes it look. Like, just let's go back a, a little way. See, it's like it's all black. And as soon as you start painting things more silver, it just kind of, it makes it feel like it's more believable. There's something about it that's just like, yes, that is awesome. That is awesome. It comes alive. It comes alive. I think that's why I like it. Brings your drawings to life. Okay, so let's go ahead and take care of this stuff down here. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. I'm just gonna think I'm crazy after he watches this. He'll be like, Pfft. I got a maniac doing my concept art. I'm gonna hire somebody else. Crazy man, I'm crazy. But he should have known what he was getting into when he hired me. He should have known. And if he doesn't know, I'm about to show him. I'm about to show him. Okay, so just some more silva around here. Okay, that looks great. Get a little bit more silva down here. <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are funny. Oh, people are asking, what am I doing for Halloween? I am going to see an amazing band called He Is Legend at a very small venue in Salt Lake City. One of my favorite bands in the world. I don't know how the heck they haven't gone big yet, but for some reason they just they like to play at small venues every now and then, and they are coming to Salt Lake, and I'm gonna go party and watch that concert. And then afterwards, I guess there's like some Halloween party, so I'm gonna go to that too. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna be for Halloween. I think I'm gonna be, Luigi's always a safe bet. I always like being a zombie too, you know, I love zombies. But, yeah, zombie only works really well when you have uh, like those colored contacts. I love colored contacts, especially when people use them properly to do good zombie cosplay or costumes. So yeah, other than that, I'm gonna I'm gonna cross dress as older Emma. <laughs> I'm going to be I'm gonna be gender band gender bend Hispanic Emma. <laughs> Jennifer Ben Hispanic Emma. Oh boy, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Half Hispanic. Half Hispanic. Okay, um Yeah, that's looking good. So again, small differences, but in the long run it makes all the difference in the world. As G Man would put it. Okay, let's go ahead and also do the leather. I think leather looks awesome when you put like just dark, dark brown on it. it makes leather look oh so lively. Except that is a little bit too lively. Too lively! Let's kick it down a notch. Love it! Love it! Cool. Okay. Uh, oh, let's color the flesh, right? It's really important is when you color the lines on flesh, you make them dark red, okay? Or just a darker, like put red into whatever skin tone it is. And it will automatically just, again, add life. See that? Went from that to that. Easy, huh? Pretty cool. Pretty cool, super easy. Try it out for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Try it out for yourself. Make it a little bit darker in these areas. In these areas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the Kool Aid Man over here right now. Oh, yeah. 
Awesome. Oh, let's not forget. I almost forgot. I almost forgot his hands. Let's not forget the hands. Those hands need to be lively too. Look alive! Look alive! And a little bit more brown down here as well on the feet. And ladies and gentlemen, I think we are nearing the time of overpainting. Yes, in fact, I do believe it is time. Let's move into overpainting and let me show you guys what I was talking about before. When I talk about laying in those lustrous colors, those lustrous colors that really need to be prominent there. Sometimes get kind of muddied out by the line art. So let's uh, call this OP. I always call it the OP layer because it is overpowered. Mm -hmm. All right. And you guys are just talking gibberish over here now. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and lay in some of those awesome lustrous colors. Like right here, where the light's hitting. Let's kind of kick that towards orange. Let's come on over here. And let's put some extra detail into this base. Let's have a spot where it's really hitting, hitting, his, uh, hitting his face there. Really, really bright spots that are just soaking up a lot of light. Yeah. Yeah. Good. See? Super simple. And basically the way that I like to think about when I'm doing this, or I like to think about it while I'm doing this, is basically whatever color is there. Like It's like, this is the final word. This is the final word. So, there's no more messing around. Like, if you want any color to be there, it is not hindered by anything. Like you can put whatever you want to on the picture at this point, and that is going to be it. So choose wisely. Choose wisely. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, what do I want to do here? What's going on with his... Oh, let's make sure we get some nice uh, brightness in these areas, right? Because the it is, in fact, being hit by the light source. So let's make sure that is nice and bright as well. Maybe not there. More so there. Shoo-be-doop. Mm, doop Still have a lot to learn when it comes to metal. Basically, whenever I'm drawing it, I just put a band of light through it. Most of the time it looks good. But I have much to learn. Even as far as my journey has gone this far, I still have much to learn. I'm still a baby. Cool. But see, this is what I'm talking about. Like, now you can start going into places like this, and you can really start kind of fleshing out these details. Like, you're just kind of cleaning things up. That's what you're doing. And after all the work that you've done on the lines and then just laying in the colors, there's no more guesswork involved. It's just like I'm, I'm literally eye-dropping every single color that I'm using now. And the way that you eye drop when you're on your brush tool is you simply just hit Alt, and that'll switch it over. And then as soon as you let go of Alt, it'll go right back to your paintbrush. And this is a really handy way of blending as well. I really like to blend in this fashion. So yeah, let's just go ahead and clean that up. Let's put a little bit of reflected light on there. A little bit of reflected light. That's another important thing to consider while you're drawing uh, the character is what, what environment is he in and make sure you're showing the ambient light going on around him. That's why, you know, towards the edge of this shoulder here, it kind of goes grayer, right? Because the outside, the ambient color or our background is this gray. So it's going to naturally kind of bounce off the edge of this and make the shoulder pad gray. And there you go. Hey, oh, there you go. I'm trying to figure out how I want this leather piece to work. It'll just be like, kind of like that. That does the job. That does the job. Gotta darken it down a little bit. Cool. 
All right, let's go ahead and take care of these leather pieces. And in the meantime, peoples, I'm going to go ahead and open up question catapults. Any questions that you have for me about doing freelance work or what you've seen today, please cast it over the castle wall. And we can, oh man, that's like so relevant today because we're drawing knights. We're drawing knights that live in castles. Please cast it over the castle walls and I'll answer your questions. And we'll end day 104 of the Kane Gale Show. All right. Let's go ahead and get these uh, strappies looking good. Look -a good. Look -a very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a little bit more color in this thing. Just a little bit more. That looks good. That looks great. I like it a lot. Okay, so what are you guys asking over here? Um, oh, uh, one of the questions I need to add to my frequently asked questions is, yes, I am using Photoshop CS3. Um, yes, I am using Photoshop CS3, and I have been ever since I worked at Sandman Studios. So, for like five years. Long time. I have loved it long time. I've heard you get Adobe uh, Photoshop CS2 for free, but don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. That'd be really cool though. I'm only sticking with this version because uh, it was legally purchased by the people I used to work for and I don't want to buy the new one because in my opinion it doesn't really have anything that I'd really use. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter basically. It doesn't matter. It does not matter to me. Go ahead and clean this stuff up here, add a little bit of detail in there. See guys, that's what I'm talking about. See, just going from that to that. You're just pulling out shapes, cleaning up, adding detail where you want it, and just getting your character to look proper. All right, next question, uh, extra toothpaste. Oh, whoops, uh, <laughs> not, not that question, sorry. Sorry, extra toothpaste, not that one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He says he's having trouble with CS5. I can't help you. I can't help you. I'm sorry. I use CS3. Okay. Um, a couple more questions and then we are done. Oh, someone's asking what kind of app is this for? Uh, that is that is secret for now. It is just going to be like an iPhone app. It's going to be a little game that you can play. It's going to be pretty sweet. And um, yeah, I think that's all that I can reveal. And it's going to be visual. Obviously, too. There are going to be some cool characters in it. But, uh, let's see. Um... <laughs> Someone's asking, can you do some Jinx fan art? Farmville guy is asking. He wants Jinx fan art just because she's flat chested. Hmm. I had considered it. I had considered it. But I don't know. I don't know. I really don't like the human champions very much in League of Legends. I know that's kind of blasphemous to say. It's, just, it's all I play is literally like the cute champions, right? Or the monster champions. I don't like to play humans, right? I'm a human. Why would I want to play a human in a game? It doesn't make sense to me. But uh, that's another conversation for never. All righty, people. Thank you for joining me live on Twitch as usual for KNKL 104. People on YouTube, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. It's going to take a little bit longer to put this on because I need to do some edits for when we had those te technical difficulties. But until then, you guys take care and have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Until then, you guys take care.